In this video, we're going to take a look at the temperature dependence of Gibbs energy of formation. So standard Gibbs energy of formation is the Gibbs energy change when one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in standard states under standard conditions. So here's an example for water. It's being formed from hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, which are the standard states. And so that is an example of a reaction and a process that would be used to define the standard Gibbs energy of formation. Here's another reaction to form methanol. Now, one of the reactants is not an element. We've got carbon monoxide there. So this wouldn't work for us to try and uh, work out and, and define the standard Gibbs energy of formation for methanol. Just also to note the standard Gibbs energy of formation to form an element in its standard state is zero. So if we're interested in hydrogen gas, while it's already in its standard state, the Gibbs energy change is zero because we've got no change happening. OK, standard conditions and states then. IUPAC recommends using a standard pressure equal to one bar. Temperature is not strictly part of standard conditions, but it is common for tables to report values at a reference temperature of 298.15 Kelvin. And the standard state or reference state is the state in which the elements are stable at the standard pressure and chosen temperature. So, for example, graphite is used for carbon. In terms of the symbol, then, we've got delta G uh, to represent Gibbs energy change, superscript circle to represent that this is under standard conditions, although sometimes that is replaced with a superscript plimsoll. Uh, we also have subscript temperature, so that's the temperature at which this value is, is relevant, so we need to take that into account. We also have a subscript F to represent the fact that this is a formation uh, reaction and that we're looking at the, the Gibbs energy change of formation. So here's some example data. Different chemical species with their state provided, and then we have values for the standard Gibbs energy of formation. These are all at 298.15 Kelvin. Bromine liquid has a value of zero because it's already in its standard state and it's an element. Uh, but if we want the value for the Gibbs energy change, the Gibbs energy of formation, um, then it's different because uh, the gas is, is not the standard state. So there's, a, there's actually a non-zero value there. Same for water. Uh, standard state is liquid, but if we want the value in the gas phase, we get a slightly different value to take into account the fact that that's no longer in the standard state. OK, and then we also have the fact that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So if we have any two of these values, we can work out the third. OK. Uh, temperature dependence then, we've ju as we've just seen, uh, delta G of formation equals delta H of formation minus T times delta S of formation. So we're actually going to use this to try and work out something to do with temperature dependence. Now we know the temperature dependence of enthalpy of formation is given by the equation shown here at the bottom. Um, so we can get the enthalpy of formation at the temperature that we're interested in T2. Um, based on knowing the enthalpy of formation at the reference temperature and the heat capacity. And this was looked at in a previous video. Uh, we also have temperature dependence of delta S formation. Again, we can work out the entropy of formation at the temperature of interest, T2, by knowing something about heat capacity and the entropy of formation at the reference temperature, T1. Again, we looked at this in a previous video. And in terms of the heat capacity that we're using, this is all based on having it in the form Cp over R equals A plus Bt plus Ct squared plus dt to the minus 2. If you had this in a different form, the equations would change, the integration would change. So, But we'll just stick into this form for Cp. OK, and then we have these equations that we've just referred to. So we're going to then combine all of this and say, well, if we want to know 
the Gibbs energy of formation at T2, we first of all need to know the entropy of formation at T2 and the enthalpy of formation at T2. And we also need to know the value of T2. And then we can plug all of that in and get a value for delta G at the temperature that we're interested in. OK, so that's been a video about the temperature dependence of Gibbs energy of formation. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And thanks very much for watching.